Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Senior Vice President Engineering, Vic Gundotra. Well, well, good morning. Looks like you're all very excited to be here. Uh, welcome to Google I.O. You know, this year marks our fourth year of this conference, and we thought we'd begin by just reminiscing for a few moments about how much we have accomplished together. You know, you go back to 2008. That was the first year we held Google I.O. Maybe some of you were there at our inaugural conference. That year, our opening keynote focused on client connectivity and the cloud. Why we recognized that this industry was going through dramatic change, that mobile phones, smartphones, and faster web browsers were changing the face of clients, and that connectivity was about to explode, both in its availability as well as its bandwidth. And that would allow us to build cloud-based services that we could hardly have dreamed of a few years ago. All that happened. In 2009, on this stage, we rallied the industry with the Chrome team to move the web forward under the banner of HTML5. And today, modern browsers are better and faster because of the work of this group of people. So thank you. And then who could forget last year when we focused <laughs> that, that was a lot of fun. And we want to thank all of you for uh, making Android the global phenomenon that it has become. Of course, like Android, this conference, too, has gone truly global. Uh, we're very excited about the 5,000-plus people that are in this room. But this year, for the first time, we did something new. We created viewing parties. We allowed developers to set up their own viewing parties uh, and stream this event live. And we had over 110 cities have these viewing parties set up. Um, in the screen behind me at any moment, we should get a sampling of what's going on around the world live right now. We have viewing parties in these 122 uh, cities, including places like Cairo, where we have over 1,000 people. It's 2 AM in the morning in Cairo. And so. To, to the more than 10,000 people at the viewing parties and the many, many thousands who are watching, who are watching on YouTube, welcome to our conference. Uh, we're truly humbled by this worldwide enthusiasm. We do recognize that you are sharing with us your most precious resource, your time. And so we hope the next two days are incredibly valuable, exciting, and a lot of fun for all of you. So let's get this show started. And to do that, I'd like to introduce Hugo Barra, Director of Android Product Management, to kick off the opening keynote. Hugo. Well, good morning, everyone. And welcome to the Android keynote at I.O. 2011. Today, we have three things to talk to you about, momentum, mobile, and more. Let's start with momentum. And I'll ask you to follow me back in time for just one minute. Do you guys remember this device? Of course you do. Well, this is the T-Mobile G1, the very first phone we shipped over two and a half years ago. And it holds a special place in our hearts. Back then, there were many skeptics. What did Google know? We had never been in the mobile space or the operating system business. Well, from those humble beginnings of one device and one carrier and one country, how much progress have we made? We have some exciting news to share with you today. So we made a quick video for you. Let's have a look.
That's right. We're incredibly thrilled to share with you today that we have activated over 100 million Android devices worldwide. Thank you. And do you know what the most exciting thing about this stat is? It's the fact that we all did it together. 36 OEMs, 215 carriers, and 450,000 Android developers all over the world. Thank you. There are now more than 310 Android devices in 112 countries. Talk about choice. And the best way to actually measure this momentum is velocity. At Google I.O. on this stage last year, Vic shared with you that we were activating 100,000 Android devices every day. By August, that number had doubled to 200,000 then 300,000 in December, and today we're activating over 400,000 Android devices every single day. Now, there's a reason why you're all here today. It's because you write software, and most of you write Android apps. Well, thanks to your extremely hard work, I'm excited to announce today that we've exceeded the mark of 200,000 applications available in Android market. And of course, what really matters is that the quality of these applications is phenomenal. CNN, Flickster, Fruit Ninja, Tap Tap Revenge, Major League Baseball, Gun Brothers, Pulse, and so many more. The world's most engaging, useful, and entertaining mobile applications are running on Android. And the most important thing for you, Android developer, is the tremendous growth in application downloads. Here's some data. It took the Android ecosystem almost two years to see the first billion application installs. It then took just five months to get to the second billion well, today, we're seeing 1 billion downloads in less than 60 days, and a total of over 4.5 billion application installs from Android market up until today. 4.5 billion application installs. Android market is seeing stronger, faster growth than ever. And that reminds me to pause and, once again, Thank you, Android developer, for your amazing support and hard work over the last two and a half years. You've been truly phenomenal, and the entire ecosystem is now being rewarded. So thank you, and thank you very much. So this wraps up the section about momentum of this keynote. And now there are two other parts, mobile and more. In mobile, we're going to cover the Android platform and talk about some of the features, the features on our roadmap. We're also going to show you two exciting new services that we're announcing today. And then we'll talk about more and give you a preview of the future, where Android is headed as an open platform and an open ecosystem, going, let's say, well beyond the mobile phone. I'd like to welcome two people on stage, Anand Agarwala, from the Android product team will drive our demos today. And to talk about Android platform, please welcome Mike Claren from the Android engineering team. Thanks, Hugo. Well, we've been busy. Over the last two and a half years, the Android team has already shipped eight releases of the Android platform. Today, I'm going to tell you what's coming next. First, we're announcing an upgrade to Honeycomb, Android 3.1. We're, roll we're rolling it out today, starting with Verizon Zoom 3G customers. Now, it's not been very long since we first launched Honeycomb, but we've managed to get a lot of nice user enhancements into the 3.1 upgrade. Let me show you a couple of them. First, people really like the new task switcher we introduced in Honeycomb. You can see it here. 
We figured that if switching between a few tasks was good, then switching between more will be even better. So we made it so that you can scroll through to see all of your most recent tasks. Now, remember that Android has true multitasking. So some of these apps may really be running, and some may not. But the user doesn't need to care. This is possible only on Android, because we're using some unique technology that automatically shuts down and restores applications transparently. The system manages resources for you, so you'll never run out of memory, and you'll never be asked to quit in order to launch something else. Next, remember the improved widgets we introduced in Honeycomb? Let's look at the scrolling Gmail widget. That's pretty nice, but what if you get a lot of mail? Well, for that, we're taking widgets to the next level. So as you can see, you can now stretch widgets horizontally or vertically. And if you're a developer and you've already created a scrolling widget for Honeycomb, you can upgrade it to be resizable with just a few lines of XML. In 3.1, we also put a lot of effort into upgrading Android's USB support. Android devices can now act as USB hosts, which means you can now do things like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that means you can now do things like importing photos directly from your digital camera to your tablet. And because Android is now a USB host, the OS also supports a ridiculous number of USB input devices as well. Keyboards, mice, trackpads, joysticks, game controllers, and more. So here you're about to see uh, Anand play, or rather attempt to play, Cordy using a game controller. OK. <laughs> <laughs> OK, well, that was a brave attempt. Um, there's a lot more in 3.1, but let me move on to some other platform news. It turns out that Android 3.1 is not just for tablets. It's also coming to Google TV this summer. This is great news for Google TV users. It's great news for Google TV users, and it gets better. Google TV will also be getting the Android market. So all of you developers. So all of you developers will now be able to create apps for Google TV using exactly the same SDK that you're using for Honeycomb. Consumers who already have a Google TV device will automatically get the update over the air. And there are new Google TV products based on 3.1 coming from Sony, Vizio, Samsung, and Logitech. If you want to hear more about bringing your apps to Google TV, please check out the Google TV session tomorrow here at I.O. OK, let's look a little farther down the road. I'm also happy to announce the next major Android release, Ice Cream Sandwich. And of course, to also debut the most important part of any release, the new logo. <laughs> All right. We're targeting a Q4 launch for Ice Cream Sandwich. And in many ways, this will be our most ambitious release to date. Let me tell you about some of the themes behind this release. First, choice. If I had to pick one word to explain Android's phenomenal growth over the past year, that word would be choice. Consumers really like choices. And with Ice Cream Sandwich, we're going to make them really, really happy. Here's just a small sample of the range of devices that will be powered by Android. So we have phones in every size and shape, phones with keyboards that slide, phones with keyboards that flip, phones with built-in game controllers, tablets in every size from 7 inches to 10 inches, even tablets that transform into laptops. And who knows what else is coming. But in the end, we know that high-quality apps are the lifeblood of Android. So our top priority for Ice Cream Sandwich will be to give app developers the tools they need to deliver great experiences on all of these devices. We want one OS that runs everywhere. Let me tell you how we're going to make that happen. To start, we're taking all of the good stuff that we added to Honeycomb for tablets, and we'll make it available everywhere, on phones, on tablets, and on everything in between. This includes the new holographic UI, the new launcher, the new multitasking UI, richer widgets, advanced applications, everything. Next, we're investing heavily in the application framework. We want to insulate developers from the differences between all of those devices 
as much as possible. So we're adding new APIs to the framework to help scale your UI across all these different form factors. And we're adding intelligence to components like the action bar. They'll be able to reconfigure themselves to optimize for the available space. We're also putting a lot of energy in tool, into our development tools. Be sure to check out the Android Tools Talk tomorrow at 3 for some exciting developments there. And last, but certainly not least, it will all be open source. <laughs> now, Ice Cream Sandwich is not just about breath. It's about depth, too. On Android, we're always looking to bring the latest technology to mobile devices. And we've got some really cutting edge stuff in the works. Anand is going to help me demo some of the latest developments from Google's technology extraction team based in Roswell, New Mexico. <laughs> For real. <laughs> Basically, this technology can look at the input from the camera and figure out where your head is and even where you're looking. It runs on the GPU, and so it can do all that insanely fast. It can process 500 frames a second. So let's have some fun with that. First, watch what happens as Anand moves his head from side to side. Because the software knows where he's looking, it can update the 3D scene in real time to match his perspective. <laughs> OK, uh, how about this? We can not only detect where Anand's head is, but we also know where, his, know where his eyes, nose, and mouth are. Now, Anand is a handsome guy, but there's always room for a little improvement. So let's fix him up. OK, uh, that's not really a good look. Maybe something in the nose area. <laughs> OK, that's, that's pretty unfortunate. Um, maybe eyes a little smaller? Wow, OK. <laughs> uh, I think the lesson here is not to attempt to improve on nature. Um, let's move on to something more practical. We call it virtual camera operator. <laughs> Let's say Anand and Hugo are together on a video chat. The software can actually figure out by itself who is speaking, and it will automatically focus on the right person. Let's give that a try. So you can, oops. Oh, so you can see here as I start talking, it zooms in smoothly to my face. And then when I start talking after a few seconds, the camera realizes that I'm here, uh, and it's going to zoom in on my face automatically. And then when I start talking again, it zooms smoothly back to me with a smooth, fluid, back and forth transition. That's pretty amazing. And note that this is not just for fun. All of this and more will be available as developer APIs in Ice Cream Sandwich, so all of you can create great new experiences. OK, that's just a quick peek at what's coming in 2011 for the Android platform. We're really excited about moving Android forward, and we can't wait to see what all of you will build with it. Thanks very much. Hugo, back to you. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. That was great. So uh, we had a little bit of fun with Anand. We showed you a new dessert, and we talked about the importance of one Android OS everywhere. We're now going to shift topics and talk about media. Today, we're now seeing a couple of new services that we think you'll really enjoy. And to talk about the first one, here's Chris Yerga from the Android Cloud Services team. Thank you, Hugo. Today, users can go to Android Market to get applications as well as books. We added the Books tab to Android Market back in February of this year. And the way it works with books is that when you purchase a book on Android Market, whether it's from the Android Market website or from your Android device, that book is instantly available to read across all your devices. Now, we're able to do this because your book purchase is tied to your Google account, not to any specific device. I'm happy to announce that we are bringing the same experience to Android Market for movies as well. Starting today, users can rent movies from Android Market and instantly stream them via the cloud to their computers or to their Android devices. We have a selection of thousands of titles available to rent, uh, competitively priced, starting at $1.99. It's a very seamless experience, and I'd like to walk you through it right now. 
we're going to start off uh, on Android market on the web. So here you see the Android Market website. And you'll notice that the home page of Android Market now shows featured content from applications, books, and movies. If we click into the Movies uh, section, we'll be taken to the Movies homepage on Android Market. And the Movies homepage shows featured content, new releases. There's categories to browse and, of course, search. And here at the top left, we have a section of top rentals that shows the most popular rentals. So why don't we pick one of those? The King's Speech, a good choice, something highbrow for this time of day. Uh, and the uh, rental process is very easy. Simple click on the Rent button, confirmation dialog to complete your rental. Now, the way this works is that movies on Android Market have a 30-day rental period during which you can begin uh, watching your movie. And then once you've started watching, you have 24 hours to complete viewing of your movie. Now, I could view the movie right here on the Android Market website, uh, streamed from the cloud, but the movies look terrific on the tablet. So I'd like to switch over to the Zoom right now. And on the Zoom tablet, we have uh, a new movies application. And so you see it there on the home page. When we tap on the, the Videos app, we're going to go in here. And you will notice that the movie that I just rented from the web is now showing up here in uh, Android and the, the movies application, ready to stream in high definition to my tablet from the cloud. Now, I can't always stream videos live from the cloud. The cloud feature is terrific. But if I'm on an airplane and I don't have data connectivity, uh, I still want to be able to watch the movie I rented. Uh, we enable you to do this with a feature we call pinning. So, we're going to go in here and select a couple of these movies and pin them to the device. Now, what pinning means is that these movies will then be automatically in the background, downloaded to the device, so that when I do get on the airplane, I'll have my movie available and ready. To... But while those are downloading, why don't we back out and show what playback looks like on the tablet. Pick a movie, Despicable Me, good choice. And so uh, playback is terrific. This is uh, you know, a high def experience. We can play and pause, jump around to more interesting bits of the movie. And uh, all of these uh, movies are available to play both here on your, your tablet as well as on the website. But uh, we don't want phones to be left out of the mix either. So uh, we're going to show you phones in a second as well. But before we do, uh, I want to show you that in addition to playing back movies, uh, we can also rent the movies directly here from the tablet. So the shop link at the top takes you directly to Android Market. Uh, Android Market, you will notice, has a new Movies tab, uh, very similar to the Apps and Books tabs with featured content, bestsellers, category browsing, et cetera. Why don't we go ahead and, uh, and look uh, at something from the featured carousel and, and pick something to rent? And the rental experience on the tablet is uh, very similar to the one that you saw on the web. A quick tap on the Rent button, confirmation dialog, and then once the, uh, the rental is complete, you'll be able to watch your movie here on the tablet or on the web or on the phone. And so now I would like to switch over to the phone and show you the new movies application there. And so the, the movies application on the phone uh, will show the exact same movies that we've just rented, both from the web and the tablet, ready once again to stream live from the cloud to my device. So that is movies on Android Market. We've made it really easy for you to rent anywhere and watch anywhere. We have a selection of thousands of movies available. And so I'd like to invite everyone to go to market.android.com and try out our new movies rental experience. Uh, the tablet application that we showed you is rolling out as part of our Honeycomb 3.1 update that Mike mentioned earlier. That is going out to Verizon Zoom 3G users starting today. And the movies application on the phone is going to be available to Android 2.2 devices and up starting in a couple weeks. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chris. Chris just showed you how seamless it is to rent a movie and then play it on the web, on your phone, or on your tablet seamlessly. We want to make it just as easy for you to enjoy the content that you already own from any device seamlessly. We just talked about movies. What's the other type of content that we all really enjoy? 
Of course, you know the answer. To talk to us about a new service from Google, here's Paul Joyce. Thank you, Hugo. Today, we're introducing Music Beta by Google. When you add your music to the new service, you can listen on the web or any compatible device. No wires, no painful syncing. Your music collection is stored in the cloud so you can stop worrying about where your songs are and start enjoying your music. Perhaps you heard a rumor or two. So let me show you how it works. This is Music Manager, a program for Windows and Mac which helps you add your songs to the new music service. You can select specific folders, but if you pick your iTunes or Windows Media Player library, all of your playlists, play counts, and ratings are added along with your songs. So let's jump to the browser. In a second, you'll see the album view of my music library, but I can browse by songs, artists, and genres. Music on the web is a full-featured music manager with everything you'd expect search, info editing, ratings, and play counts. Let's go to the home view. It displays recently played and recently added music. Now let's drill into the album detail view. Love that transition. Just double click on a song, and it plays right away. All of my existing playlists are there on the left, and I can quickly create new ones. Select a couple songs, drag them over, and name the playlist. When I create the IO Jams playlist, it's available right away on all my devices, my tablet, my phone, or any other computer. But to make creating playlists even easier, we have a new feature. We can build a playlist automatically for you based on any song you like. We call this Instant Mix. Let's say I'm in the mood for some earth, wind, and fire. Notice the search suggestions that appear right away as you type. Select a song, and Instant Mix selects 25 tracks from your library that go great together. To do this, we look at artist similarity, and like some other smart playlist creation tools. Our model literally listens to your music. With machine learning, we find similar tracks based on how they sound to build a truly ingenious mix. So that's music beta on the web. Let's shift over to my mobile devices. So here's the latest version of Android Music. Sorry, here's the latest version of the Android Music app running on my tablet. This is the same UI we shipped with the first Honeycomb release, and it looks really sharp. This is the 3D carousel, and we can switch over to the artist wall to highlight a few other effects. It's so cool when he does that. And of course, it'll show all my local music. But there's one very awesome difference. This app connects to the music service to access all of my music in the cloud. And that means I'll never have to use a cable to add music again. So let's switch over to the playlist view. Here are all my playlists, including, there they are, the IO Jams playlist and the instant mix we just created on the web. No wires, no painful syncing. It's all just available instantly. Let's switch over to the album view. Having all of my music available to me wherever, whenever, is extremely powerful. But for times when I don't have a data connection on my tablet or phone, we wanted to create an easy way to enjoy your music offline, too. And we came up with two things. First, we cached music I've recently played. So without doing anything, I have access to a selection of songs when I'm offline. And second, I can select albums, playlists, and artists using the same Make Available Offline feature that Chris showed you for movies. So let's switch over to the phone. The phone has the same capabilities we just demonstrated. Cloud music access, offline caching. There's the 3D UI. 
because it's exactly the same application download. But when it's running on Froyo or Gingerbread instead of Honeycomb, the UI is optimized for the smaller screen. For example, in portrait mode, navigation is more list-driven, and you can swipe to change views. Like on the web and tablet, I can create and edit playlists or make an instant mix and become instantly available everywhere. The best part, if I get a brand new phone, all I have to do is sign in. My music is right there, right away. Didn't we play Shining Star last year? I guess that's my reminder to talk about availability. So we're really excited about this service. It's launching in beta today, and we're going to roll it out in stages, initially by invitation only to US users. You can add up to 20,000 songs to your library. And at least while it's in beta, the service is free. So all of you attending Google I.O. who are based in the United States will get an invitation. We thought you'd like that part. You'll receive an email today with instructions to get started. And if you're on the webcast, we invite you to visit music.google.com to learn more details and request your invitation. Finally. We're releasing the updated music app on Android Market today. Any Android 2.2 or higher device, download the new app, and it'll work with music stored in your phone even while you're waiting for an invitation. So thank you. Back to you, Hugo. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. That was awesome. So Honeycomb 3.1, ice cream sandwich, movie rentals, and movies. How do you guys think we're doing so far? The, the kind of innovation that you saw here today has been the driving force behind Android's success. But of course, that innovation only matters if it can actually reach consumers. So today, we're announcing a founding team of industry leaders, including many partners from the Open Handset Alliance, that Google is going to work with on this. Together, we'll create new guidelines for how quickly devices will get updated after new Android platform releases. And thank you. And, and for how long they'll continue to get updated after that. The founding partners are Verizon, HTC, Samsung, Sprint, Sony Ericsson, LG, T-Mobile, Vodafone, Motorola, and AT&T. And we're welcoming others uh, to join us, of course. To start, we're jointly announcing today that new devices from these partners will receive the latest Android platform updates for 18 months after their first launch, if the hardware allows. And that's just the beginning. Stay tuned in for more on this soon. We think, thank you. We think this is really great news for users. It's excellent for developers. And it's really great for the entire industry. So let's move on. Let's transition now to the section about more. Today, we'd like to unveil some of the Android team's vision for the future of computing and applications. Think of it as the beginning of the next wave of Android. As an open platform, Android was always meant to go well beyond the mobile phone. And today, we wanted to give you a little taste of that. We want to enable developers to do a lot more with Android, to write apps for new classes of hardware, and why not even create their own hardware. 
And we want to do that in a way that takes the concept of openness to a new level. I'd like you to meet Matt Hershenson and Joe Britt from the Android hardware engineering team. They've been working on a few exciting, really cool projects that they want to talk to you about. So Matt's going to get started, and Joe will come after. Thanks, Hugo. As you heard earlier, there are over 300 Android devices in the market. We know hardware developers would love to have a way to build accessories that can work with any device from any manufacturer. Until now, that's been hard, but that's about to change. Today, we're announcing Android Open Accessory. We're adding platform support for hardware accessories and a new API to talk to them. Using these, you can build a wide range of accessories, and they'll work with any Android device going forward. Let me show you a demo. Everyone uses their phone for music at the gym. But what if your Android device could integrate more fully with your workout? This is an exercise bike made with Life Fitness, and it's compatible with Android Open Accessory. Anand's going to get ready for a workout on it. First, put on his headband. <laughs> now, most importantly, he's got his Android phone. Okay, now he's going to dress for his workout. <laughs> Hi. People go crazy for his legs. All right, now watch what happens when he plugs the phone into the bike. It recognizes the accessory, and it shows an application that knows how to talk to it. If the phone didn't already have a compatible app, the bike would just send the user to the app in Android Market to download it. This is really cool. If a user buys an accessory that needs an app, when they connect the phone to the accessory, it just takes them where they need to go to get that app. OK, so Anand's now going to launch CardioQuest. And then the, the exercise bike actually recognizes that it's been connected to the Android phone. He's going to select an easy workout. And then the API is actually going to have the bike control the game that he's going to play. Now see, as he pedals faster, he moves the Android guy up. He pedals slower, he moves the Android guy down. <laughs> Going off faster. Oh, oh whoa. whoa, one calorie, one calorie. You do that a thousand more times, and you can have one of those ice cream sandwiches at the after party. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. H how do you think he got those legs? So you can check out the exercise bike and actually play the game later on in the interactive zone. Today we're making the Android Open Accessory API available for Honeycomb and Gingerbread. It supports USB now, and Bluetooth support will come in the future. So it's not just about software. It's about hardware, too. And we want to provide a complete solution so today, we're releasing the hardware and software for an Android Open Accessory reference design. We're calling it the ADK for Android Accessory Development Kit. Here it is. The ADK is based on Arduino and a USB host. Everybody loves Arduino. It also incorporates circuitry from a USB host from circuits at home. And I think by the applause people already know, Arduino is an open platform with tons of third party and har hardware and software add-ons that developers can use to develop Android accessories. Now, the ADK isn't the only way. Microchip and RT Corporation are each launching their own open accessory compatible development boards today. Let's take a look at one of these ADK boards in action. So here we have a labyrinth game. And we've added two off-the-shelf servo motors to it. And those are hooked up to this ADK board. The ADK board then is communicating to the tablet. The tablet's running a simple app which sends the accelerometer data over USB to the ADK, which is then controlling the tilt of the labyrinth to match the tablet. All I need to do is that I tilt it to get the, the ball out, OK? So the object of the game is to tilt the platform to make the ball follow the line 
and go all the way to the end without falling into any of the ooh, holes. <laughs> you, you got to three, a little better than the calorie count, but it's clear you need practice at both. So we thought this little labyrinth game was cool, was, was cute, like, like the legs. Um, but we wanted something a little, little bigger to match the success of Android. We, we couldn't even fit it on the stage, but we have a video. Let's roll the video. Android's been a huge success, and we think the ADK and Android Open Accessories will be too. This labyrinth was inspired by that. It weighs about 5,000 pounds and is powered by a pair of 200 volt 50 amp motors. It's all controlled by the Android tablet hooked up through an ADK, much like the one on stage. If you want to learn more about Android Open Accessories and the ADK, and learn how to get started working on your own accessories, please visit the session this afternoon at 1.15 or visit accessories.android.com. Uh. So now, now you know what that giant covered object uh, in the glass fenced area by the, the escalator is. That's the super labyrinth. The demo will be available for you to play with. It's a ton of fun after the keynote and for the next two days. Definitely check it out. I predict there will be a big line. With the ADK, we're welcoming hardware developers into the Android community and giving them a path to building great Android accessories quickly and easily. One important note, this program is completely open. There are no NDAs, there are no fees, there's no approval process to build a hardware accessory or to write the software that goes with it. So get started. Thank you. Step number one is go to the interactive zone where you'll see a bunch of open accessory powered accessories from our partners. Um, and there's some great stuff there, so please check it out. Now, Joe Britt is here, I believe, to talk to you about an even larger type of accessory. <laughs> Joe. Thank you, up. Hugo. That's right. So <clears throat> we want to go one step further and really broaden the concept of, of what exactly is an Android accessory. We'd like to think of your entire home as an accessory, or better yet, as a network of accessories, and think of Android as the operating system for your home. We call this vision Android at Home. At the center of the Android at Home architecture is your Android device. We're extending the Android OS to include new services that allow Android apps to discover, connect, and communicate with appliances and devices in the home. We call this the Android at Home framework. For appliances that cannot connect to Wi-Fi, we've designed an open wireless protocol that allows Android devices to talk to them. This new protocol enables very low cost connectivity with anything that's electrical in your home, such as lights, alarm clocks, thermostats, dishwashers, etc. We want to think of every appliance in your home as a potential I.O. device for Android apps. So let's take a look at a couple of demos of this stuff. So let's bring the stage lights down just a little. And now, Anand, would you like to show the audience the trick you just learned? Yes, I would. Uh, OK, OK, Anon is taking a little theatrical license. What we just demonstrated was a very simple Hello World type app on his tablet that displays a series of digital light switches. Using the Android at Home framework, this tablet can talk wirelessly to these two floor lamps so Anon can turn them on and off. The other two switches are linked to these two super bright audience lights on the left and right, and Anon can also control them wirelessly. OK, now that you know how to control the lights, you can let your imagination as a developer completely take over. Imagine the new ways you'll be able to deliver notifications. You could build an alarm clock app that slowly ramps up the lights in the room and starts playing your favorite music through the stereo as the alarm time approaches. Or imagine how your applications could tie into calendar to automatically control home devices. If you're a game developer, think about how this functionality could make gameplay more immersive. Imagine using the Android at Home framework to control an irrigation system and enable a real-world Farmville app. If, 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 
if, if you don't win the game, if you don't win the game, then your garden dies, right? So there's significant incentive to do a good job. As a quick example of this idea, we hook the stage lights up to Quake. And so as Anon plays the game, you'll see it up here on the screen, and fires shots, you'll see these lights flash. Now, these are actually connected to the game. It's communicating through Android at home and controlling these lights. OK, OK, you, you, you get the idea with that. Um, so to bring this vision to reality, we're partnering with several industry players. One I'd really like to mention is Lighting Science, one of the world's leading LED lighting technology manufacturers. They'll start selling the first LED light bulbs and switches for the Android at Home environment by the end of this year. Prototypes of their Android at Home compatible bulbs are being used here in these onstage lamps. We also have a number of Android at Home enabled devices available for you to play with in the interactive zone. So please stop by and check them out. All right, I'm going to walk over to the other side of the stage. The next thing I'd like to show you is a totally new kind of Android device. It's an Android at Home hub. It's both a standalone music beta endpoint and a bridge to the Android at Home network. We call it Project Tungsten. Let's take a look at a couple of actual devices. These are our reference designs. All right, so what we have here are two Tungsten devices. A Tungsten device runs the Android OS and the Android at Home software framework. It's always powered on and always connected to the cloud. It has audio out, and these examples can connect to either speakers or my home stereo system. So let, let's bring the stage lights down again, just so I can show you something else cool. If you hadn't noticed, they have these crazy lights on them. And, and look at the shape of this thing. I know that Mike Claron earlier mentioned uh, our Roswell uh, extraction team. Well, I mean, how could this be anything but alien technology? All right, so we, we can bring the lights up a little bit now. So, so what exactly do these do? Earlier today, Paul showed you our music beta service on a phone and on a tablet. Here, we have the same music service, but working with these new devices. So Anon, let's turn up the volume on one of them. You could imagine that this device is playing music in, say, your living room. If we take a look at the tablet Anon is using, we can see that he's in the music app, but there's a new feature to select an output device. The tablet can direct music to one or more tungsten boxes like the ones we have here. So Anon, why don't you start music on both of them? So you can enjoy your music synchronized throughout your house, all streaming through Music Beta. So when Anon tapped on those buttons, the music stream was sent transparently from one box to the other. Since the boxes are running Android, they just pull the music directly from the music library in the cloud. All right. All this functionality that you've seen here is part of the Android at Home framework. And it'll be completely open for developers to explore and write their own applications. To give you an example of the kinds of applications we have in mind, we've put together a very simple demo. This is actually another tungsten. It looks very different from those, but it's, it's another example of the device. So when we show you this example, I want you to keep in mind that this is just a conceptual example. It's not an actual product. Anon has some CDs here. Imagine that these CDs shipped with an NFC, or near field communication tag, inside the jewel case, which activates when you take off the packaging. He's going to take one of the CDs, OK, run DMC, and he's going to touch it to this device. That chime means that it's been added to my library, the entire CD. If he, if he, touches, it, if he touches it again, thank you, thank you. If he touches it again, it starts playing. So it's pretty cool, right? <laughs> we could add another CD, like Santana, and start playing it. OK, well, that's it for this Android at Home preview. We hope that you can see how this combination of new cloud services, software, and devices enables a whole new universe of applications. You'll hear a lot more about Android at Home over the next few months. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Joe. That was really fun. Now, I'll remind you that there's a lot of applications today doing crazy things, using location, gyroscope, insane GPU graphics that most of us wouldn't have thought possible 
even two years ago. So what we're doing here is creating new possibilities with Open Accessory and Android at home with the expectation that your imagination as a developer is really going to make it flourish. So there's going to be a lot more details coming on these shortly, but we wanted to show you a quick preview, just a little taste for where the Android team is going. Now let's do a quick recap. We covered quite a lot today. In Momentum, we talked about 100 million devices and 4.5 billion application installs. Then in mobile, we covered Honeycomb 3.1 for tablets and also Google TV. We talked about Ice Cream Sandwich, the new Android platform release, one Android OS everywhere. Uh, we talked about media in the cloud with movie rentals and music, both launching today. We also talked about a new industry partnership to bring the latest Android innovation to users faster. And then we talked about more. We, we talked about Android Open Accessory, which you just saw, and our vision for Android at home devices and applications. Was that almost too much for 51 minutes? <laughs> now, there are some unbelievably cool Android devices coming out now and over the next few weeks and months with really interesting new form factors and awesome new features. In fact, an example is this device right here. Um, this is the new Samsung 10.1 tab. Um, it's a great new device with a dual core processor. It's got a super sharp screen that's 720p video capable. It's got dual band Wi-Fi support. It's really slick. It's thinner and lighter than you'd ever imagine. Um, this device is uh, going to launch in about a month or so, so it's not available to anyone yet, with one exception. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. Thanks to Samsung. All 5,000 of you are getting one today. So, you'll be able to get your device over the next couple of days. There's no need to rush, including at the party tonight. This device comes with Honeycomb 3.0 and it'll get Honeycomb 3.1, which is rolling out today over the next couple of weeks. We hope you enjoy this. Now, just a couple of quick announcements. We've designed 22 sessions at Google I.O. this year specifically focused on Android development topics with in-depth content prepared and delivered by Android engineers. So check those out. And to, hear, to see what the latest schedule is, there have been a few minor changes. Download the Google I.O. app, if you haven't already, for your tablet or for your phone. And I should also tell you that tomorrow at 10.45, we're going to be making some Android market announcements of some user and developer features, which I think you'll enjoy. So check that out as well. It will also be on Livecast. And lastly, let me just once again Thank you, Android developers, for your phenomenal support. I look forward to talking to you, most of you or many of you, uh, at the conference today and, of course, at the party tonight. So thank you, and have a great Google I.O.